How can we all be reading the same Bible and yet we have four different views on the millennium? What's up, everybody? Another interesting question from one of our SFP Swordsmith community members. If you guys are not yet SFP Swordsmith members, go to sfpswordsmith.com. Link is in the description box. Once you guys get there, you guys can sign up for free or you guys can sign up as a monthly supporter, become a Swordsmith so that you guys can unlock our Swordsmith courses. Once you guys get there, go all the way down to questions. You guys can ask your questions there today. We have a question from our sister, Teresa, and this is about the millennium. She says, how can we all be reading the same Bible, but yet come to these four different conclusions? And this is actually is pretty cool. I can't really see everything here. It says, um, so this is the cross and then tribulation. We're going to take a look at that in today's SFP Q&A, answering questions or SFP Swordsmith questions. I still don't know what to call this. What's up, everybody? Welcome to class. This is where we investigate, prove, and observe, and we test every doctrine with the truth of God's word. My name is Tilla. You guys can follow me on all social media. Links are in the description box below. Special shout out and a thank you to everybody who's been supporting um, this ministry. If you guys want to support, you guys can do so by praying for this ministry and also donating schoolforprofits.tv via PayPal. Link is in the description box. Let's go to Matthew 24. It says, immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of heaven shall be shaken and then shall appear the son of the son of man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the son of man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So this is the coming of Jesus Christ. This is the second coming here. Okay, second coming. And this is immediately after the tribulation. <clears throat> so after the tribulation, that's when the second coming happens. And then you go to 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 16 and 17. It says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven. So right there, in 24, uh, chapter 24 of Matthew says, After the tribulation of those days, then the second coming of Jesus Christ. And at the second coming of Jesus Christ, it says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. So the first resurrection happens at the second coming. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up with them in the air, um, in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air. So that would be the rapture. So at the second coming of Jesus Christ, the rapture happens. So where do we go when Jesus Christ comes back and takes us with him in the air? Where do we go after? It says here, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. So he will come again, second coming, and receive us unto himself, that where I am, there ye may be also. So here it says he comes again. There is no two second comings, because then the second second coming would be a third coming. It wouldn't make sense, right? So when he comes again, he will receive us to himself, as explained in 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 16 and 17, that where I am, that's in heaven, there in heaven you will be also. That's why he's preparing a place for us in heaven. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. So when Jesus Christ comes back, he will resurrect the dead in Christ, and he will take them up in the air, and he will take us who remain and alive, take us up in the air. Where are we going to go? To heaven. What happens to the wicked? This is what happens to the wicked. Second Thessalonians 2, it says in verse 8, And then shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the workings of the working of Satan with all powers, power and signs and lying wonders, with all deceivableness of, of unrighteousness in them that perish. Because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. So when Jesus Christ comes back, he will destroy the wicked ones. It also says in Jeremiah 25. Let's go to Jeremiah 25 real quick. 
Jeremiah 25, starting from verse 30, it says, Therefore prophesy thou against them all these words, and say unto them, The Lord shall roar from on high, and utter his voice from his holy habitation. Now remember, again, this is echoing 1 Thessalonians 4 and verse 16, where it says, The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and the dead in Christ will, will rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the air. Therefore prophesy thou against them, uh, them all these words, and say unto them that the Lord shall roar from on high, and utter his voice from his holy habitation. He shall mightily roar upon his habitation. He shall give a shout, as they that tread the grapes against, the, uh, against all the inhabitants of the earth. A noise shall come even to the ends of the earth, for the Lord hath a controversy with the nations. He will plead with all flesh. He will give them that are wicked to the sword, saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, evil shall go forth from nation to nation, a great whirlwind shall be raised up from the coasts of the earth, and the slain of the Lord shall be at that day from one end of the earth even unto the other end of the earth. They shall not be lamented, neither gathered nor buried. They shall be like dung, or they shall be dung upon the ground. So when Jesus Christ comes back, all the wicked are going to die. They shall be destroyed by the brightness of his coming, says Second Thessalonians. And here it says that they will be slain. They will be slain from one end of the earth to the other end of the earth. So they will be here, dead. What happens? What about during the millennium? Look what it says in Revelation. Chapter 20 it says, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a, and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Okay, he, he was bound a thousand years, cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, until the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, and after that, he must be loosed a little season. Now watch this. I saw thrones, and they sat upon them. And judgment was given unto them, and I saw the souls of them which were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. They lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Okay, who, Remember, who was the one that lived, that, that, that went with Christ at the second coming of Jesus Christ? The righteous. They go where? To heaven. And it says here that they will live and reign with Christ a thousand years, but the rest of the dead live not again until after, until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. So at the first resurrection, when Jesus Christ comes back and shouts with the voice of the archangel, the dead in Christ will rise first. We which are alive and remain will be caught up with them in the air. Then we, would, then we will go to heaven where Jesus has prepared mansions for us okay this is the first resurrection during this time is when the devil is cast uh, the devil is bound for a thousand years and the dead remember that the wicked die at the second coming of jesus christ and those wicked are dead for a thousand years they did not live again until the thousand years were finished so they are here on earth like dung until the thousand years are finished. When the thousand years are finished, look at this. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. Well, wait a minute. The wicked are now destroyed. Who is he gathering together? Well, again, it says that the, that, that the wicked, those um, that are wicked did not live again. They did not live again until the thousand years were finished. So when the thousand years are expired, this was when the wicked now resurrect. This is the second resurrection from which you are going to die and there will be no third resurrection. You are not going to resurrect from this death, the second death. And when the thousand years are expired, remember the thousand years expired and now the wicked are uh, you know, they come up again, they, they resurrect. Satan shall be loosed from his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations, those who are wicked, who resurrect, 
which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. So I hope that you guys can finally see the picture. There's a second uh, coming of Jesus Christ where the wicked will die. The dead who are wicked are already dead, but the dead in Christ will rise first, will rise, and then um, those who are alive and remain will be caught up with them in the air, and then they will go to heaven. They will reign with Christ for a thousand years. Those who are wicked will die. They are dead. They are here for a thousand years, and they will not live again until after the thousand years are finished. And then Jesus Christ comes back. If you guys continue reading, Jesus Christ comes back with the saints, with the, the new Jerusalem. And fire and brimstone comes from heaven towards the wicked. The wicked are going to burn. And Malachi 4 says that they're going to burn until they are burnt up, until they are ashes. So they're not going to be burning forever. Hellfire is forever. Hellfire is eternal. But the wicked is not eternal. Remember, John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever shall believe on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So those who do not believe on him, on him will perish and will not have everlasting life. So those at the, at the very end who um, fire and brimstone um, falls on them, they will perish. And Malachi 4 says that they're going to burn up until they are ashes under the soles of our feet. So I hope this makes everything clear for you, my friend. Teresa, I hope that this is clear for you. Um, I know that there are many interpretations out there, many, many interpretations out there, but I think we have to be careful who we listen to and we have to continue to, uh, you know, we have to continue to compare things with scripture to see what this person, if this person is saying something scriptural, biblical or not, we got to compare with scripture. We got to do our own studies, study to show yourselves approved unto God. And I hope that I've answered this question to your satisfaction. I now just want to take the time to acknowledge our supporters who support us via PayPal. Thank you, Raul. Thank you, Erica. Thank you, Loretta. Thank you, RK, for the donations. If you guys want to support this ministry, you guys can do so by praying for this ministry and also donating at schoolforprofits.tv via PayPal. The link is in the description box below. If you guys want to support a different way, you guys can also purchase one of these, Revelation verse by verse. Those of you guys who are having trouble with the book of Revelation, this is the book for you. It goes through the book of Revelation verse by verse. Links for these are also in the description box. All you, or, or you guys can also purchase some hats, some SFP shirts, and things like that at sfpmerch.shop. Link is also in the description box. The donations do help us keep this ministry afloat. Helps us a lot, especially with upcoming documentaries and things like that. Thank you guys again. Praise God always. See you guys on the next one. Peace. Avocado grease. We cannot, we cannot afford to let the critical goal of limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius slip out of our reach. And those impacts are getting worse and could potentially be irreversible. The debate over pre-trib, mid-trib, and post-trib is uh, quite a debate. You know, some people think they're 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 pre-trib. They believe Jesus is coming before the tribulation, or he's coming in the middle of the tribulation, or he's coming at the end of the tribulation. We don't know for sure when Jesus will return, but God does give us several signs, several markers that we know that the end will be near. Many of those are seen in Matthew 24. We have things like wars, rumors of wars, um, pestilences and earthquakes and all these events. You know, there are a lot of dear Christians that are mixed up regarding the, um, the events, the chronology of the coming of the Lord. Uh, all Christians agree there's going to be a tribulation. You can't escape what Jesus says in Matthew 24. There's a time of trouble such as there never has been coming. Jesus is actually quoting Daniel chapter 12 where Daniel says in chapter 12, at that time, Michael will stand up, the great prince that stands for the children of thy people, and there will be a time of trouble such as there never has been, even under that same time. So they all agree there is this great tribulation that you read about. As you look at all the passages regarding the second coming, you realize these are things that you're gonna be able to see. Every eye shall see him. 
the elements are melting with fervent heat. I, I don't know if you've ever been in a sauna, um, you know, it gets past 120, 130, you begin to feel it. And I, I don't know exactly what temperature elements begin to burn up, but I'm sure it's going to be quite hot. And so that's not something that you could sort of ignore. The Bible is clear that we are going to hear Jesus come back with a great sound of a trumpet. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, beginning in verse 16, the Bible actually says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. He's coming back shouting with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God. So again, you don't see that in many of the ideology and, and, the, and the teachings of today uh, in modern Christianity. Most of them teach it's a secret silent event. But the Bible says when Jesus Christ comes back, he's gonna be shouting in all of his power and glory. He's gonna be excited to see his bride whom he has been separated from for so long.